Hi guys, Dr. Rob Barrington here with some more nutrition advice. Plasma antioxidants, uh, dietary antioxidants. If you um, find some people uh, who know about nutrition and you ask them uh, what is the most important uh, dietary antioxidant, what is the most important plasma antioxidant, um, you'll get a variety of different answers and often you'll be given a reason for the answer. Um, you know, somebody might say vitamin E, for example, because it's fat soluble uh, vitamin and it goes into the plasma membranes and it, it protects the plasma membranes. Some people might say um, vitamin C um, because vitamin C is very good at recycling vitamin E. Um, there, are, there are many different answers you could give um, and I just wanted to do a quick video on uh, a relatively unknown antioxidant and how it fits in um, to um, the uh, this uh, this role as an antioxidant um, uh, within um, our cells and our blood. Um, the antioxidant I wanted to talk about is called urate, um, and urate is probably a substance that uh, many people have never heard of, um, but it is um, to any biochemist or biologist quite uh, an important substance. Um, we have urate produced naturally uh, in our uh, through the course of our metabolism. Urate is actually a byproduct of purine metabolism, and purines are one of the um, uh, substances, the nitrogenous bases that are used to construct our DNA. Um, we have metabolic pathways that um, that break down the purines and pyrimidines from DNA. Uh, they do various things with them, ready to excrete them. And one of the pathways. Uh, produces uric acid which dissociates in solution in plasma in the blood to produce urate. Um, now not many people will have heard of urate or understand that it is an antioxidant um, but how much of an important antioxidant is it? Um, it's obviously not a dietary antioxidant because we don't um, really have a uh, you know it, it obviously going to be present in some foods but the main the main source of the uric acid that we have uh, in our um, you know in our in our system is is endogenous. It's an endogenously produced antioxidant. Um, to give an illustration of how uh, you know important it is and how how reason uh, you know the reason for this discussion is if we have a look at the uh, relative contribution of antioxidants to uh, the antioxidant potential of human blood, for example. Uh, if we look at vitamin C, even at its upper plasma levels. Um, you're going to get about 25% um, of the antioxidant capacity of plasma coming from vitamin C. That's the upper level. And it can range anywhere down from 1% up to 25%. So, you know, the mean value might be somewhere in the middle, about 10% of the antioxidant status. The antioxidant capacity of blood may come from vitamin C. It's slightly lower for vitamin E, maybe between 0 and 10%. Um, if we have a look at the amount that is contributed by urate, we see that it's between 35 and 65 percent. So in terms of the antioxidant capacity of our blood, um, urate is a very important, a quantitatively important antioxidant. It provides uh, most of the antioxidant potential of our blood. Uh, it's quantitatively the most important antioxidant in our blood. Um, and therefore, it's very surprising that um, when you are learning about antioxidants, it's not really um, why this is not really widely known. Um, now, like I say, it's an endogenous antioxidant, and it produces uh, produces these effects. So, really, um, how do we, um, you know, it, why is this important nutritionally? Um, well, one of the things about urate is that there is a there is a paradox that. It appears to be in plasma a very important antioxidant, and yet elevated levels of um, urate in our plasma are associated with cardiovascular disease. They're associated with type 2 diabetes, uh, and they're associated with uh, obesity. So really what we can say is that um, as plasma levels of urate rise, higher levels of plasma urate, um, we actually are at an increased risk of the metabolic syndrome that is going to lead to these, you know, those three Western lifestyle diseases. Um, and the, that, that is the paradox. If it's an important dietary, if it's an important endogenous antioxidant, why is it that as the levels go up, um, there, uh, there is an increased risk of disease? Um, and the answer to the question is not clear and nobody really knows. Um, so I was going to speculate on uh, and link into some dietary antioxidants of why this might actually be the case. Um, 
when you when you think about um, antioxidants in in the plasma, uh, you have to think about them working synergistically. They don't work in isolation; they work together. And this is the same with cellular antioxidants. Um, the antioxidant, uh, the the master antioxidants, it's called in the cell, um, glutathione, uh, is able to be uh, and it, it acts as a as a recycling agent for other. Um, for other antioxidants. Um, vitamin C is also a recycling uh, agent. It recycles vitamin E in the plasma membranes. So the antioxidants don't work in isolation. It's not just simply a case of one antioxidant uh, reacting with one free radical. Uh, they work synergistically together in a, in a kind of a, a recycling um, mechanism that allows each one to be able to recycle the other. And therefore they all rely on one another. The antioxidant capacity of your plasma is really not about single antioxidants. It's about having multiple different antioxidants because of the way they work together. And one of the examples that is very pertinent to this is the fact that vitamin C will recycle um, urate. So why is urate an antioxidant? Well, urate is an antioxidant because uh, it has a heterocyclic structure. And this ring structure is very much like um, the structure you see on polyphenols. And polyphenols are um, plant antioxidants that we get in our diet. And they have this very similar kind of ring structure. And this ring structure is very important. Uh, you also see it on vitamin E. Um, and what effectively happens is these, these structures are able to donate electrons to free radicals, which neutralizes the free radical. But at the same time, by neutralizing the free radical and donating electrons, the compound, the antioxidant, becomes a radical itself. Uh, and this is the problem. Um, however, uh, substances that are good antioxidants have an ability to dissociate and delocalize the charge of the unpaired electrons that they now have. So although when an antioxidant um, quenches a free radical by donating electrons, it becomes a radical itself. It's the, heter it's the heterocyclic structure of um, urate that allows it to, to, de to delocalize the charge of the electrons around its structure so that it's not actually a damaging radical. Um, and this means that it's very, it has a very low reactivity. But of course, because it's a radical, it can now um, it can now actually receive electrons from another antioxidant. It's effectively a, a radical itself, a free radical. Um, so if vitamin C comes along towards a, uh, a you know, a, a urate radical, uh, the vitamin C can actually regenerate the original um, antioxidant form of the urate. And in turn, the vitamin C itself becomes, um, uh, it, it becomes, uh, you know, it, it's, it's lost its electrons, so it becomes oxidized itself. Uh, and there are other substances that can actually regenerate vitamin C. And like I said, vitamin C can regenerate vitamin E. So it's this heterocyclic um, structure uh, and its interaction with vitamin C that actually makes it very interesting. Um, firstly, it's not going to be as damaging as the original free radical that it quenched. It's going to be less damaging because of this ring structure that delocalizes the charge, makes it less reactive. But it's the ability of vitamin C to come along and actually turn it back into a urate molecule um, that is actually important because if we have high levels of urate in our plasma, but we have low levels of vitamin C, uh, you can see that that why that might be associated with disease, because over time the urate is going to um, it is going to become a ra radicalized itself. It's going to become a, a, a prooxidant, um, and you know there is much discussion in the scientific literature as to whether. Um, urate is a prooxidant or an antioxidant and I would suggest that depends on how much um, vitamin C you have in your plasma. If your levels of vitamin C are high um, you're going to be able to prevent the urate um, becoming a pro a, a, a prooxidant itself because you're going to be able to regenerate the antioxidant form of the urate. If you have low levels of vitamin C uh, in your plasma, um, over time uh, the urate is obviously going to act as an antioxidant, become uh, become a prooxidant itself, uh, and this it will be it will lead to a depletion of your antioxidant resources because there isn't this ability to regenerate it. So I think the confusion, and I think the reason um, there is confusion over whether um, urate is actually a prooxidant or an antioxidant is because researchers and the people looking into this don't consider the other antioxidants. Um, 
there polyphenols can work in your plasma polyphenols are present in your plasma they may well be able to recycle uh, urate back to its uh, antioxidant uh, form and therefore again this may be why dietary polyphenols uh, have a benefit on health um, now the plasma levels of um, urate can reach about 300 micromolar whereas the plasma levels of um, ascorbic acid are much lower they must be they might be about you know 50 micromolar maybe a little bit higher uh, with high levels of supplementation um so it, it, you know although quantitatively um urate is an important antioxidant in human plasma um it's, it it clearly has an antioxidant function when you measure it in a test tube um many studies have taken blood from humans they've measured urate in a test tube and it clearly provides a very high level of antioxidant protection to the blood in a test tube whether it will provide the same amount of antioxidant protection protection in our blood i think really depends on what else is in the blood if we have a good level of other antioxidants particularly vitamin c uh, i think that the anti uh, i think there is good evidence and there's a reason to believe that the uh, urate would act as an antioxidant however if we have low levels of vitamin c i think there's good reason to think that the urate would then become a pro-oxidant and that would actually have a, a negative effect and this is very likely where the association between high levels of um, urate and the western lifestyle diseases i mentioned cardiovascular disease type 2 diabetes obesity metabolic syndrome this is where the association likely comes from and um, because we know that low levels low intakes of vitamin c are also associated with those with those diseases so there may be there may be a mechanism whereby for example um, it's known for example that fructose um, dietary fructose will increase levels of um, urate in in the plasma uh, and this this may you know then that is uh, high levels of urate in turn are associated with cardiovascular disease so there are obviously dietary ways that you can raise levels of um of urate i think the real question comes down to um what else are you doing in your diet to be able to prevent that urate then becoming a pro-oxidant if your urate is a pro-oxidant because you have a poor diet you have low levels of vitamin e low levels of vitamin c perhaps you're not taking in enough selenium and your glutathione levels are low in your plasma as well if you're also eating foods um, such as high fructose corn syrup um, fructose other other substances that can increase uh, your plasma levels of urate you have a, a recipe for producing uh, blood that is uh, that has a you know a pro-oxidant contained within it at very high concentrations uh, so it's it's quantitatively the most important antioxidant but when it becomes a, a pro-oxidant it becomes quantitatively the most important pro-oxidant so it's a very double-edged sword however if your diet is good and you're not eating high amounts of fructose you're not eating high amounts of high fructose corn syrup um, you, you know you're going to have lower levels of urate but you're also going to have the vitamin c to be able um, to protect from that pro-oxidant effect the question the, the real question is if you eat high amounts of fructose and high fructose corn syrup and other foods that increase uh, urate levels in the plasma but you also eat uh, and consume high amounts of vitamin c under those circumstances is the urate a pro-oxidant or an antioxidant um, that question hasn't been uh, answered as far as i can see in the literature and i would suggest that if your vitamin c levels are high uh, you may very well be able to prevent um, your urate becoming a pro-oxidant even under those conditions and i think this goes back to all of the studies that have been done on dietary antioxidants of why they're so good at um, protecting us from these western lifestyle diseases this is one of the um, you know the overlooked uh, facets of these diseases uh, the association between uh, uh, you know urate levels in the plasma and these diseases and it's not a cause and effect we don't know that there is a cause and effect but there is a clear association there as your plasma urate levels go up your risk of these diseases goes up but that would infer that you're possibly eating a poor quality diet and therefore you don't have the dietary antioxidants to protect yourself from the pro-oxidant effects of urate um, so what's the take-home message from this uh, it's very difficult to know what your um, your uric acid production is and your urate levels in your plasma uh, you, you can obviously quite easily measure them but people don't um, but 
if you have high levels, high intakes of vitamin C, if your plasma vitamin C levels are optimized, if your other antioxidant or, or antioxidants are optimized, so you're taking good levels of selenium, so you increase your glutathione, you're taking vitamin E, you're eating lots of plant foods. Under those circumstances, um, it would be, it, you know, it could be suggested that it's really irrelevant what you're, as long as you haven't got very, very high levels of urate, which would lead to something like gout. I think it's really, um, it's down to the fact that you know you've got to look at your diet as a whole, and this is why balancing the diet with a variety of different antioxidants is very important. I've been stressing this over my videos. There are so many questions uh, about how antioxidants interact and how they work. Um, and so few of them be, have been effectively answered. Um, I think you have to step back and take a, a you know a, 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 a wide view of this. That it appears that a variety of plant foods and a variety of antioxidants um, are possibly it, you know it's possibly the best strategy in order to be able to protect yourself. Um, consumption of a small uh, narrow um, uh, range of foods that provide specific nutrients, as well as taking supplements of specific single nutrients in very high amounts uh, may not provide the same level of protection and because we don't really understand how um, urate interacts with other antioxidants there has been work done on vitamin c and a limited another num number of other vitamins uh, uh, other antioxidants as well but really because we don't understand how urate becomes a pro-oxidant or how it becomes an antioxidant other than its interaction with you know these limited number of other antioxidants it would make sense to consume a variety of antioxidants uh, to, to to give yourself the best um, you know likely protection from uh, it it becoming a pro oxidant certainly vitamin c is very important and the um, you know the, the the literature showing a protective effect for high levels of vitamin c against western lifestyle diseases i think is very uh, it's certainly fairly strong um, uh, both from both from supplements and um, from plant foods, despite what um, some people will tell you, there is a, a you know I think quite a, a strong uh, a, you know a quite a reasonably extensive amount of literature that shows that vitamin C is pivotal, and I think it's possibly uh, one of the one of the reasons is because of this way that it interacts with with urate. So I hope you found that interesting. Um, it's something possibly um, some of you hadn't heard of before. Um, if you feel like um, grabbing a biochemistry book and just looking quickly at um, go to the index and look up um, uric acid or urate um, you'll probably find some um, very interesting information um, certainly um, nutritional biochemistry books do contain information on um, you know urate being an antioxidant um, and there is lots of papers out there speculating on whether it's a pro-oxidant or an antioxidant um, and it's just one of those things that makes nutrition a very interesting subject because we just don't know all of the answers. So I hope you found that interesting. Uh, as always, eat well, stay healthy and protect yourself. Uh, and I'll see you soon for another video. Take care. <laughs>